All right, it's going live right about now. Hello, everybody. Hope you guys are having a great day. Uh, sorry for the crazy hair today, but if you guys notice, I now have some glasses on. These are not real uh, prescription glasses, uh, but I am going to see about uh, getting some. These are blue light uh, blocking glasses, uh, and I decided to give them a try because I wanted to see if they would help me um, lessen my migraines that I get quite a bit. Uh, and so far today, they've actually been doing a pretty good job. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and play around with the lighting because uh, I'm doing this a little bit later than I normally would. Uh, and I want the lighting to look a little bit better than what it looks <laughs> right now. Uh, so please bear with me. I think, yeah, I think that this is actually looking better here because it looks a little washed out on the sample. Uh, let me know how the audio sounds, uh, if everything sounds good, if I'm too loud or anything like that. Uh, please let me know. Uh, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be creating an Adobe Fresco. Now, I'm going to quick set up uh, here so I can go live on Instagram in just a moment. Uh, but first, I need to set up my, my desk because it's a little bit of a mess right now because I've been uh, on vacation this week. Uh, and I thought that it would be fun to just quick go live right now uh, and share with you guys what I've been creating. Uh, so please, if you guys are in the chat, please uh, say hello. Uh, and also, if you guys like what you see in the stream, please remember to like and subscribe to the channel. Now, let me see. Let me get my phone out because I don't even have my phone out and ready. So let's see. Let me pull up my iPad here. Uh, and we'll jump in here so you guys can see one of the things that I was working on today. Uh, this is a fun little doodle just like... It's not my absolute favorite, but I thought it would be fun to create something that had to do with uh, Tiger King. Um, and it actually turned out way better than I thought it was going to turn out. Uh, but I think I'm probably going to do another version of this because it's not 100% uh, what I like uh, in my doodles. Uh, but this is just like a fun little thing that I did um, based on Joe Exotic from the Tiger King. Uh, I actually really enjoy creating this. My wife was a little bit of a critic uh, of it, but that's okay. Um, I think that's something that I need to do a little bit different with this uh, illustration it is going to be uh, playing around with the nose and things like that. So let me go live on Instagram. All right, so now we are live on Instagram. Hello, Instagram family. Hope you guys are having a great day. Uh, we're going to be jumping in here into Adobe Fresco on the iPad Pro, working on some fun doodles. As you guys can see here, I did a fun illustration of Joe Exotic. Uh, I just uh, watched the show last week, 
uh, and I really enjoyed it. So I thought I would just do a quick little doodle of Joe Exotic. We're going to do other stuff beyond working on this illustration here, but I thought it'd be fun to still share it. All right, so I'm actually going to jump over and I was working yesterday. Actually, is it in the same document? It might be in the same document, actually. Oh, it is, isn't it? Let's see. Let's go ahead and hide this and we'll hide Joe here. This is actually something that I worked on yesterday. Let's see, let's read the comments here on Instagram. <laughs> yep, Joe Exotic. Yeah, so it was it was fun to, to create uh, create this this fun uh, illustration right here. Let me actually blow this up a little bit. Um, it was a lot of fun to create it, and I feel like it turned out better than I thought it was. I actually did another one. Um, let's see if if this will show up or not. Oops. So this was another one that I created. Let's move it over here. This was the first Joe Exotic. Uh, illustration that I created. Uh, I wasn't a huge fan of it, so I decided to jump in and do a second one, which was this version right here. Again, I'm gonna probably do another one because I'm still not happy with how the nose turned out. Um, but it was a good, uh, it was a good first uh, couple of tries, and they didn't take too long to to create. So, uh, and then I wanted to show you guys these doodles I did last night. Thank you so much. Uh, Dennis all right and so also for everybody in the chat both on Instagram and on YouTube if you guys have any questions whatsoever please feel free to ask away this is just gonna be a fun night of doodling I don't know how long I'm gonna be live I don't know uh, what I'm going to create uh, but we will just see probably gonna just start with some just regular plain doodles How has everybody been? How has uh, has anybody created anything awesome uh, this week? And hopefully everybody is staying safe. All right. Whoops. Why is it? Uh, that's why. Oops. I just realized on YouTube that we do have that record thing popping up. So let's see if we can't fix that. There we go. That should be better. All right, so, and again, for those of you who are just tuning in, we are doing this in Adobe Fresco on the iPad Pro. Just gonna draw some faces for right now. Anybody has any questions, please feel free to ask away. If you guys are liking what you guys are seeing on the stream, both on Instagram and on YouTube, please give it a like. Uh, for those of you on Instagram, please hit that heart button. And hopefully you guys enjoy everything that you guys see tonight and all the other times I go live on uh, the stream. Okay. I'm going to create a different layer to actually do the hair on this character. all the excess sometimes when I'm doing these doodles I don't always create a separate layer to do this and I don't worry about any excess that we might have uh, on the illustration simply because these are just like quick fun little things they're not something for like a client rotate that a little bit there we go and I'll be honest with, with everybody one of the hardest things for me to draw is actually women 
And over the years, I've heard a lot of people uh, say similar stuff where the, re uh, the main reason why it might be hard for me to draw a woman is because I'm a man. And I've had friend, uh, female friends who can't draw men. Uh, and it has to do it completely with the fact that they're separate gender. So sometimes I like to push myself and I like to try and create uh, doodles of women because I can't just draw just men. Clients want a variety of uh, ethnicities, they want a variety of sexes. In fact, um, I had a fun time with, uh, I did a sticker for Adobe Fresco and uh, there was a little secret that we that we didn't really outwardly say, but the Adobe Fresco character was uh, the original idea was that she would be transgender. Again, if anybody has any questions, please feel free to ask away. Uh, so this is Adobe Fresco on the iPad Pro. Pretty much every time that you see, uh, see me creating um, on the iPad, it is usually in Adobe Fresco, especially nowadays. No problem. So what you're seeing here, a question just came out on YouTube. Uh, are these vector raster brushes? These are all vector brushes that I'm using here. The only time that you'll see me use raster brushes is when I'm doing sketches uh, in pencil form.
Now, one thing I, I love about Fresco versus using like, Adobe Illustrator Draw, which is what I used to use a lot, um, is the fact that I can actually select individual pieces and they don't have to be on separate layers. Again, if uh, anybody has questions, please feel free to ask. A question I get a lot, um, or actually here's a question. What size is your iPad? I have the 12.9 inch uh, iPad Pro. Um, it's not the latest generation that just came out, um, but it does an amazing job. In fact, I don't even know if I will update uh, to the new iPad Pro. I don't see a reason uh, to do it uh, because all of this works perfect. Um, but one question I get asked uh, quite a bit with uh, these like face doodles is like, is there any reference? Um, and honestly, there's not. Uh, sometimes there are people that I've seen in movies or in real life that inspire um, the illustrations. But other than that, there really isn't any um, any real reference except for the Joe Exotic illustration I showed at the beginning of the stream. I want to say hello to everybody who's tuning in on YouTube. Looks like there are eight people watching right now live. That is awesome. Uh, please let me know if you guys have any questions whatsoever. And that goes for everybody on Instagram as well. The more questions, the more that you guys can hear me speak beyond just watching me creating these doodles. Also, if you guys are liking what you are seeing, please remember to uh, send some hearts on Instagram or like the stream. Also, if you guys on Instagram have not done so, definitely check out uh, my YouTube channel where I do these live streams. You guys can see a lot more of what I'm creating through there. Um, and there's a lot of streams that I've been doing the last uh, couple of weeks. And I hope to keep doing them over the course of all of this craziness that's happening in the world. You can find me on YouTube by just uh, searching my name, Rocky Rourke. Hello, Anthony. Thanks for tuning in on YouTube. Uh, let's see. Anna Goldfeder says, do you use a screen protector to change the texture of your iPad while drawing? I used to with my previous iPad. Uh, but now with this iPad, I actually don't. I bought a screen, uh, screen protector and I just never put it on because it actually, this one has a little bit different texture than previous models in my opinion. So I don't have a screen protector on this one. And because of the fact that Adobe Fresco has this very nice uh, smoothing technique on it, there really isn't a need for me to have one. It helps to compensate for that.
Uh, so re resolution doesn't really matter too much with this unless you're working in raster. Uh, if you're working in vector like I am here, uh, everything can be resized to however you need it to be. Uh, so there's no need to actually uh, uh, worry about resolution. I create my illustrations in the maximum size uh, artboard that you can use. Uh, and I find that that works pro most likely the, uh, not most likely, it works the best overall. Awesome. Thanks, uh, Anna, for tuning in from Australia. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there and hopefully all of the wildfires have died down. I think my favorite part of these streams is when people uh, ask questions uh, because there's a lot uh, a lot that can be uh, answered during these streams. Not only am I creating stuff, but I'm also able to answer questions that people might have uh, you know, about my work or my process. So please feel free to ask away. And also if you guys have any suggestions for what you might wanna see on this stream or future streams, please let me know as well. Uh, I always look to um, everybody for inspiration, uh, just like you guys look to me for inspiration. So a uh, question just came in on Instagram. Your characters have small eyes in comparison to their faces. Uh, what gave you this style? Uh, overall, my style with these doodles changes quite a bit. Um, right now, I do a lot of these eyes where we don't have, we don't see like the whites of the eyes. We just see the pupils themselves. And that's just because it's a quick and easy uh, style. I don't have to worry about focusing on the eyes too much. Um, if we actually go back, I'm gonna jump out of this real quick. And we go down to, this is actually an illustration I did for a client um, a while back. You can see here uh, that I use a different type of uh, eye for this. So it really depends on what I'm doing um, or what uh, type of illustrations I'm working on. Uh, we can go into here. You know, we still have that the same dotted eyes. But then we also have a character here who has the whites of the eyes. Um, so it just depends on what I'm doing or what I'm feeling like doing in the moment. So right now, these characters all have these dotted eyes uh, and that's about it. But I do I do see uh, some people asking about that um, with the styles, like what influences them. Uh, and honestly, it's a bit of just like what I'm feeling in the moment, uh, as well as uh, what kind of inspiration I've seen myself. Uh, so one of my biggest inspirations right now is an amazing uh, illustrator uh, that goes by the name of Nick Bear um, on Instagram. Let me see if I can pull up his uh, his account on Instagram. His name is Bear Man Beast. He is an amazing illustrator. He actually works, if I'm not mistaken, on uh, Rick and Morty. So I would definitely suggest checking him out. Oops, there we go. Uh, let's see, Anthony, thank you for that. Does working at the largest sizes just make the vectors cleaner or is it just more comfortable navigating using the whole canvas? Uh, for me, it's just it's just more comfortable. It's not, it doesn't affect any of the illustrations except for just that they're just gonna be bigger. But the fact that they're all vector, you can easily shrink them uh, depending on what you're trying to do. So I would definitely suggest, you know, I, I would suggest that you try and uh, try and do that, but you don't have to. It's, it's really just preference. Let's see. 
so fun. I love watching you. I've only used Adobe Draw. How does it differ uh, to what you're using? So for me, the biggest difference between, there's two big differences between Adobe Illustrator Draw and Adobe Fresco. Um, with Adobe Fresco number one, you can work in both vector and raster at the exact same time. So for instance, if I wanted to jump in and just sketch out how I might want, uh, let me actually go in and grab my brush I normally work with. Let's see, I imagine that would be under dry media. And we want, we're looking for pencil, not rough pencil. I just was playing around the other night. Um, there we go, sketching. So I can go ahead and figure out, you know, how I want this guy's hairstyle to be uh, directly inside of this. So in case I wanted to just like try a couple different things out and see what worked and what didn't, I could do that here directly with in vector in a sketch format. Or excuse me, in raster in a sketch format. Um, the other thing is that there's, well, actually there's another one too that I'll, I'll mention in a second. Uh, is the fact that this, it just feels more natural. The smoothing on this is a lot better than uh, Adobe Illustrator Draw. But the another thing is that I can go through and select one specific illustration and I can move it independently of the others. That's something that you could not do in Adobe, uh, in Adobe Illustrator Draw. Hello, Jeffrey. Thanks for tuning in on on uh, YouTube. Hello, Vanessa. Thank you so much. I'm glad you think this is cool. Uh, Anthony, uh, what's the biggest place you've ever you've seen your own work unexpectedly? Um, somebody once sent me a, a photo of my work on a billboard. I've had my work on multiple billboards in the past, um, but this specific one uh, was completely unexpected. It was a client. They ended up uh, taking what I created and put it on a billboard and we had no idea that's what they were going to be doing with it um, So that was a, a pretty big surprise um, I have used uh, procreate I'm not a fan of procreate um, I used it back in the day when it first came out and It wasn't very good in my opinion um, it lacked a lot of stuff that I that I had hoped for in a drawing app, and I just haven't gone back to it since then. Great questions coming in, guys. Thank you so much for asking them. Oh, I see Vanessa is both on Instagram and on YouTube. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in in both spaces, uh, Vanessa. change this one up a little bit
Let's see, got some comments coming in on YouTube. Hey, Ka, Rocky, what's good? I am doing good. Just decided to jump on here. I don't actually, uh, I'm taking the week off, um, but I thought that it'd be fun just to jump on and do some doodling. I was doing some stuff anyway, um, just uh, sitting on the couch watching all of the Marvel movies. And I thought it'd be fun just to come on here and jump on just for a little bit and uh, draw some things. Let's see. Hey, Rocky, when you're not on a live stream, do you put as much thought and care into your lines? Uh, I would feel like my drawing, uh, we're moving slowly, but my lines aren't as good. Uh, so what you're seeing here, the amount of, of attention to detail that I'm doing right here is the same detail that I do in all of my doodles, uh, all of my work. Um, I always take my time. If a line isn't working, then I just delete it. Um, because I don't want to have something that's not going to work, right? Um, so for instance, if, uh, let's say you noticed when I did the eyebrow on this character, um, the first couple times it didn't work out. And so I just redid it. Um, but I didn't let the small imperfections that you see, um, right here, uh, for those of you on YouTube, uh, I didn't let those little imperfections stop me from, you know, stopping again and redoing it again. So I try not to, um, not to uh, let too much of that, you know, interfere with this. Uh, which Marvel movies are you on now? So I just finished up Thor Ragnarok, uh, and now I'm going to uh, be watching. Let's see, which movies is the next one I'm supposed to be watching? Um, I want to say it's Black Panther is the next one. So I've been watching all of the MCU movies in order. That they take place i think next is black panther uh, then is infinity war then is ant-man and wasp and then finally is avengers endgame uh let's see <laughs> uh let's see would you have a similar style using traditional art mediums or do you or or you think this enhanced your aesthetic so let me actually see, uh, oh crap, I don't have my sketchbook in the studio right now, um, but you will actually see that uh, in previous posts I've done or previous live streams, I've shared my sketchbook and they've been relatively close to this. Um, and it just really depends on the style that I'm working in at the time. I would say the majority of what I do though is all digital now, uh, but I do have a lot of different uh, different pieces of um, of traditional artwork uh, on in my studio. <laughs> this guy looks like Locke from Lost. Yeah, he kind of does. It's it's funny because um, I was as I was doing this one right here two uh two actors uh popped up in my head or two characters popped up in my head as i was finishing it the first was uh what, what's his name postelweight uh he was a, a i think a british actor he played in a lot of uh, different movies over the years um and then also uh there will be blood um his character both of those characters popped up when i was working on this one in my head but for the most part i just see how the lines take me do you have a favorite character to draw? I don't really have a favorite character to draw. I don't draw the same characters um, for the most part. Um, I think that in the past, I mean, I, I tend to like a different wide variety of characters that I draw. So uh, one thing that you'll notice is a lot of these characters I draw over time, they have similar head shapes or there's similar head shapes that I use from time to time. Uh, so if we go back and look at, or actually no, it was in this one. Never mind. So if we hide this, hide these two. Actually, let me merge those down. Uh, if we hide this and we show this one here, you can see very similar head shapes to what we've already been doing uh, throughout the stream, right? Uh, and the same types of hairstyles generally as well. Uh, so, like for instance, these characters here, they all have that same thing where the nose comes outside of the head. 
Same with this one here, this one, uh, was there one more? Yep, this one over here. Uh, and then you also see the same type of like chins pop up. So like this chin here is similar to this one. It's kind of similar to these two here, this, this. So like I use similar head shapes throughout. I change up all the different elements that create the character though. Uh, but for the most part, uh, I don't really have a, one character that I like to draw over and over again. Uh, I don't think I would want to draw this guy over and over again. I might actually do it though. I might do another one uh, just for kicks and get, or yeah, just for fun. So let's get back to these doodles here. And one thing I'm trying to do is if you notice here, they go from one facing this way, one facing right to left, right to left, uh, right and then left. It's just because I noticed that a lot of times I would favor one side. So I try and push myself outside my comfort zone because uh, I prefer to draw characters facing right. And that's because of the fact that I'm right handed. But yeah, so if you guys are liking what you guys have seen in the stream so far, please feel free to give a like on Insta or excuse me on YouTube and hit some hearts on Instagram. And keep the questions going. Uh, I, like I said, the best part of this for me is not just the creating. It's also the fact that I get to hear all of these amazing questions that you guys have. Let's see. Uh, no, I, uh, the question that just came up on Instagram, have you ever had to replace your Apple Pencil tip? Uh, no, I haven't actually. Um, I think I've been lucky in that. I don't know. Uh, I've never had to replace it. The only thing that might happen with it is that it might unscrew a little bit over time, but I don't think that you really have to replace these. Uh, I feel like if you would have to replace the, the tip of the pencil, then you would end up having to replace the screen because you're pressing on it way, way too hard. Hey, Kevin, how's it going? Uh, so right now I'm using uh, the Adobe Fresco, uh, but I use a wide variety of different pieces of software such as Adobe Illustrator, uh, Adobe Premiere Pro for my YouTube videos. Um, I use uh, Adobe XD for a lot of different stuff. I use Adobe InDesign, Photoshop. I use a wide variety, but I only predominantly use uh, Adobe products. I'm an Adobe uh, addict. Just trying something new right here. Eh, we'll keep it. I'm not the biggest fan of it, but we'll keep it. Uh, let's see, two questions. Are you using OBS for the screen recording? And also, what's your most embarrassing live stream story? Uh, first off, yes, I'm using OBS uh, for this setup on YouTube. I have uh, multiple screens on YouTube, including where you guys can just see me just like this. Uh, you know, right before we're about to begin. And then also I have a setup that's not working at the moment for dual streamers, whoops, and that's my desktop, um, iPad Pro here. Uh, and let's see, a bear, embarrassing stories for live streaming. Um, I would say the only thing that pops up uh, would be, in my head right now, uh, would be when I was at Adobe and uh, I feel like it was like the first or second day that I was streaming. Uh, I was the host and creating at the same time. 
and uh, what ended up happening was I had a complete brain fart and I could not remember what I was supposed to say. I literally spaced out and blanked out completely and it threw me off so bad, but I was able to get back into it and I was able to continue on. But it was very embarrassing because I'm like, oh my God, I do this all the time. Why in the world would I just space out and forget this? Uh, so I see I see Anthony uh, asked a question, but let me quick answer a couple things in here. Uh, somebody asked Procreate or Adobe Fresco. Adobe Fresco 100% because it's vector and raster. Let's see, I am in a learning stage now. Tips for becoming a good designer. Practice, practice, practice. You know, we hear people talk about practicing all the time, right? But in reality, practice is the best way for you to learn your craft and get better at what you do. It's the one thing that school does get right uh, is that they have you creating so many different things, except for they don't have you creating enough stuff. So you should be creating every single day. You should try and even push yourself to create multiple things per day in order to get better at what you're trying to do. Let me create, let me finish this character and then I'll answer uh, Anthony's question. Sometimes I like to show a range of uh, emotion. Hey, Mike Jones, how are you doing, man? I was just thinking about you, you today, actually, because I was thinking, oh my God, like I would be, I was supposed to be uh, at Columbus right now, you know, checking into my hotel room today, and everything. I'm excited though for next year. I can't wait for Creative South uh, 2021. Just thought about extending that a little bit. That's good to hear, man. This guy's stressing out here. He's like, oh my god. Yeah, it, it definitely is. And I hope that you don't feel feel any any bad. Like don't feel bad about, you know, having to, you know, cancel it and everything. I think ultimately it was the best decision. And everybody everybody who attends Creative South, they understand. You know, they love you. You know, we're all family and they, whoops. There's you know, there's nothing that we can do about stuff like this. Let's actually just drink this guy here. Okay, let me see what. Let's see. About to sleep. Just saw you were on. Thought I would say hello. Keep crushing it. I am at peace about it, brother. Appreciate the kind words. No problem, man. You have a good night. And I hope that you uh, have a great rest of your week and create some awesome stuff, man. All right, so let's see. Anthony says Can you affect the line weight of vectors? Uh, like when you scale up and want to match another portion of your illustration. So you can't do it the way that you're thinking because these aren't strokes. So these aren't lines, right? So these are actual, this would be the equivalent in Adobe Illustrator of having the blob brush tool. The only way that you can scale it up and down and do that to do something similar is just try and match it by pen pressure. So I'm gonna shrink this down and then we're gonna try and match, whoops, wrong one. We're gonna try and match this as best as we can. See, it's a little light, so we're just gonna go over it one more time. We can match it like this. This is the, the best way that I know how to do that. Um, and then the same thing goes if we want to, whoops, scale this up. So if we scale this up to here, then we just need to try and match it with the pen pressure. So I'm pressing a lot, pressing a lot harder, and we're able to match it. 
and sometimes it takes a couple of practice runs in order to get that matching done hopefully that answers your your question anthony uh, okay so i see we had a bunch of stuff pop up here on instagram uh, how would you simply make him have animated emotions? So if you mean actual animated or animation, um, that's a little bit trickier and I, I'm not gonna go into that. But if you're talking about just like giving him a more range of emotion, uh, let's see, let's actually go in here. We're gonna erase these uh, parts here. And erase the mouth. And we're going to change the emotion for this character. So one thing that I do, I'm going to make it, make it to where he's super happy. Oops, let's redo this one. So now this character is super happy. And we didn't even have to change any of the other pieces of his face. We just changed the eyebrows and the mouth here. The The two biggest parts of a character is that, that determines the emotion that they have is the eyebrows and the mouth, right? So if I went through and I erased these eyebrows, whoops, I erased these eyebrows, And instead, I just changed the angle of them. Now it's a maniacal laugh, right? So the best way to change the emotion of the character is not to change the shape of the, of the head. It's just simply to change the eyebrows and the mouth itself. Those are the best ways that you can do it. And you don't have to, to have it to where it's like an open mouth like this, you know? You can just do it based on just like, let's see, let's draw a quick circle here. We'll draw a couple eyes, right? And then you can see, you know, right now this, this character is happy, right? But then you add this in and it's a bit of more of like a smirk, right? Then you have a sad face. Now you have an angry face. It's all in the mouth and the eyebrows. That is the best way of showing emotion. Uh, no, I don't speak Spanish. I have tried to learn many times. In fact, my wife uh, is Mexican. Uh, and so uh, her parents only speak Spanish. And so um, I have tried so many times to learn Spanish. Unfortunately, my brain just cannot absorb it for some reason um i tried i've tried a lot and i still am trying to this day um i've tried to learn spanish um i'm using adobe fresco on the ipad pro thank you so much guys for all of the the great questions and please remember if you're on uh youtube watching this uh please feel free to like uh, and subscribe to my youtube channel uh, so that you guys can see more of these live streams when they go live. That's actually a little small, so we're going to increase the size of it. Sometimes when I create these, I have no plan whatsoever as to what the character is going to look like or how I'm going to do it or how I'm going to create the character. And sometimes I have a little bit of a plan. So like right now in my head, as I was creating this character here, uh, my thought was, okay, I want to have like a nice swooped hair here. I want to make this character probably more feminine than I want them to be uh, more masculine. And at first I was gonna do a shaved head, but I didn't really like that. So I decided just to add the little area here.
what has uh, everybody been working on this week? See if you guys can talk about it. Has anybody created anything awesome? Whoops. This is why I use two separate layers, so that's easy for me to clean this up. Oh, cool, Jeffrey. That's a, that seems like a cool project. He's working on a teen pregnancy legal rights book featuring illustrations. And are you creating the illustrations your, yourself? to merge those together. Uh, let's see. Zareth Medina, I'm redoing my portfolio. Do you have any tips? So it really depends on what you're trying to do. You know, what, what your goals are for the portfolio. If you're looking for to get work, versus looking to get a job, there's different things that you you need to do with a portfolio. Uh, number one, don't just show images. Show actual case studies, like talk about your thought process uh, behind everything that you created for a specific project. Um, make sure that you include plenty of photos, plenty of uh, imagery of like sketches and things like that. Um, and talk really talk about like what your thought process was that you're trying to do like why were you trying to do this what were you trying to do that what were the failures and successes always include failures because people actually really enjoy that let's see starting a new project with food illustrations oops low battery mode uh starting a, a, new, a new project with food illustrations and processes after your last fresco video I think I'm looking into doing it vector style. That's awesome. That's good to hear. Uh, I took some advice from you from a previous video about process. That's great, Jeffrey. Let's see. I was doing. I was going to draw in fresco, but couldn't get the lines right, so I drew with a sharpie and traced in Illustrator. Yeah, sometimes that happens. Um, it takes a lot of practice to get this right. Um, it's something where you can't just pick up a um, a stylus, for instance, and just start drawing. It takes practice to get it quite right. Favorite fresco brushes. So... I only use two brushes. Um, this is Adobe Fresco. Um, I only use two brushes with Adobe Fresco. Um, I use with the vector, the basic round, and that's it. No other brushes at all. Uh, and then in the raster, I use the pencil brush. That's it. I only use two brushes and it always drives Adobe crazy because they want me to try out different things that I don't do. 
um, it boggles their mind the fact that I only use these two brushes. And even in Adobe Illustrator Draw, I only used two brushes. I didn't use anything else. Yeah, Jeffrey, I would definitely suggest using an Apple Pencil. I think that will probably be the best thing uh, for you uh, because the Apple Pencil is more pen pressure sensitive. Um, and if you're using an iPad Pro, it's going to work out probably the best for you. Yes, they're definitely, I think that the painterly brushes are actually really good. I just don't use them. I don't have a need to use them. Um, I've tried to find ways of doing it. And, and in fact, I've tried to um, incorporate them somehow into my style. Just never have the, the need for it. know if the, the Adobe Vector brushes are, are poorly. I think that what it just comes down to is just practicing with them uh, more and more. The more you practice with them, the better you're, you're going to get, the, better, the more results you're going to find. I will admit that one thing I wish is that I do wish that there was more brushes um, with Adobe Fresco, Vector brushes. Uh, because they have basically stuck with the same brushes from Adobe uh, Illustrator Draw. Uh, and it would be good to have some vector brushes or even have it to where when I did this, it was a line instead of a fill. But I don't think it's something that they can do just yet. Let's do something different with this character. You know, uh, some uh, someone on Instagram just said that the lag from the brush uh, kills them. Um, it's again, it's something that you get used to. Um, when I worked with a Wacom uh, tablet years ago, there was a bit of a lag and I just had to get used to it. Um, and so I guess that helped me out when, when I started using uh, the software uh, because I just got used to the fact that, okay, there's lag. Um, but it doesn't really bother me at all. If you ever use the, a Wacom uh, Bamboo or an Intuos tablet where you're not looking down at what you're drawing, it's the same exact principle. Where you just have to get used to draw, like being able to draw without actually looking at the screen itself. Yeah, for many years I used a, uh, an Intuos instead of a mouse when I was working. And my coworkers were always like, what are you doing? Now though, I do a lot of my stuff with a mouse. Even my uh, 
my vector illustrations in Adobe Illustrators all via a mouse. Um, sometimes I can even do it with a trackpad. Excuse me. Uh, I can do it with a trackpad and it's no problem. Oh yeah, there's always a learning curve. That's the one thing that people have to remember with any types of new software is that there's always going to be a learning curve and that if you don't put in the time to really um, to learn it, then it, you're not going to find any benefit. Oh crap, Instagram is ending. Sorry guys, hope you guys have a great night. Uh, well that sucked. I can't believe I just noticed that rate like just a few seconds before it was gonna end. Oh no. All right, you know what? I think then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, end the stream here. Let me jump over to my main camera. Uh, I wanna thank you guys for tuning in for this. Uh, and I think that tonight actually went really well. We created some pretty cool doodles uh, on the stream here. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, uh, do this again tomorrow. Uh, and we're going to continue on this canvas here, uh, creating some more doodles and more illustrations. Um, so if you guys would like to tune in tomorrow, please do. I don't know when I'm going to go live. Um, Let's say tomorrow I'm going to go live at, let's say noon tomorrow. Noon tomorrow, I'm going to try and go live uh, for another hour or two. Uh, and we'll finish up this artboard and fill it with some more uh, faces and characters and everything like that. Um, if you guys enjoyed what you saw tonight, uh, please feel free to like the stream. Uh, and please uh, subscribe if you guys are not subscribed yet. Uh, I hope you guys have a great night. Always remember to stay passionate, stay positive, and stay creative. And please be safe out there. Please wash your hands. Please, you know, isolate yourself from others uh, and everything like that. So good night, everybody. I hope you have a great night uh, or a great day, depending on where you are. Uh, talking to you guys who are in Australia right now. Um, but, yeah, I'm really excited uh, to keep doing these streams. They've been a lot of fun for me, and I hope to get there for you guys as well. 
Uh, and also, good luck, Jeffrey, on that project. Keep it up, uh, just like uh, what everybody else is saying in the chat right now. And I guess that's it for me. All right, guys. Talk to you later. Good night. Bye.